Alright, I'm going to talk about a game that y'all should really check out. This game is called Survive the Nights. Uh, it's by a small group of indie developers, A to Z. Uh, it's going to be one of the best zombie games out so far. And in my personal opinion, it's it's going to be better than seven uh, H1Z1. Because H1Z1 is... I mean, they might have all the special effects and everything but they're missing so much concept to it and they're they're so full of self right now when i watch their streams and everything they're they're missing what a zombie apocalypse really is and if you saw the crawler that was just some amazing uh animation there but basically in this game here you're going to be able to make all kinds of traps uh as they develop uh right now you're seeing a trap it is a tank um, propane tank with a pig leg on it and he would shoot his gun up in the air uh, the zombies would hear the gun from inside they would come out and they would smell the pig leg go to the pig leg and he would blow the tank up with them going toward it, towards it and kill them and you know this is some really good mechanics here and then like right here you got electricity and power he's uh turning on this little generator portable light thing that's hooked to the RV you're going to be able to pretty much you can enter every building fortify any building you're going to be able to uh, get it use almost every vehicle in the game and fortify them on top of it uh, for example like the RV uh, you you can go mobile and just have your camp in the RV going around looting and and uh, fortifying your RV, which you'll see it in one of these videos, the next video coming up, you'll see it in there. Uh, you have, as you can see on the screen, he's putting traps down. Uh, you'll be able to go to air compressors and stuff and pull parts off of them. Um, you'll be able to add parts to them to make them work, take parts off to make them not work. Uh, your vehicle. Uh, you're going to want to take, if you're going to have to leave your vehicle somewhere, you're going to want to take parts out of the engine, uh, spark plugs, wires, whatever uh, they have available for you to put in and out of the engines to make sure that if another player comes by, they don't take off with your ride. Uh, you can lock doors. As you can see the RV here, this RV didn't even have a toolbox in it if you paid any attention to this video. And they talk about being able to move stuff around and basically in the next video you're getting ready to watch here it shows a toolbox in the RV and that just shows that you can actually uh, roll a toolbox into the RV I don't know if you actually physically roll it in there but you can I guess pick it up and put it in your RV and store stuff in your tools now in this video right here we're gonna you're gonna see how they fortify uh, just one vehicle and some more about electricity and all in the game um, and see there's a toolbox right there all these cabinets are usable the stoves usable the refrigerators usable and you're going to see them go into the cabinet here in a minute and some of the cool things it's like the doors are openable and lockable as you can see this metal thing's been uh, fortified on the front window uh, he's going to look here show the light switch flips up and down and what he's going to do in this video is he's going to run out here and he's going to kill the zombies that are inside then he's going to check the power breaker box over here. Uh, he's going to go to his RV, get a breaker, put the breaker in the box, go to the back, use some copper wire and a spark plug and put on the genie in the back. And from there, he's going to crank power up on this building. And then all the light switches in this place is going to work. Now, I don't know if these freezers are going to work or not, but these gas pumps will work. Uh, these gas pumps, once you get power to the building, the gas pumps will work. And he shows it in the video when he clicks on one of the gas pumps. It has 600 and some liters worth of gas out of 1,000 uh, liters that can be held in there. And when he turns around and starts to go back to the front, I want you to look up in the sky and you're going to see this um, oh, the sign. Uh, the sign, as you can see, it's not lit, it's not moving, doing nothing. And most games, these are things are just aesthetic props and that's it. They do nothing. Well, in this one here, that sign's going to actually rotate, light up, and stuff. And they're, they're doing some really good stuff. They talked about uh, all objects. They, they don't believe in actually putting objects in a game unless they're usable. Uh, so a lot of objects are more than likely going to be usable. You're going to be able to 
uh, you won't have to use a wiki to craft because uh, your crafting book or whatever will have your stuff in there. Uh, these roll doors will open up on this building. You'll be able to drive your build, your vehicles in and, and work on them. Um, they just got a big leap in actual what uh, a zombie apocalypse is, you know. And PvP, um, there'll, there'll be PvP, but there's penalties to it. And a lot of games just don't get it. Uh, a reason a lot of zombie games fail is because when they add the PvP element, there's nothing that... I mean, PvP players, I mean, honestly, they don't care about anything else except for PvP. That's player versus player, not player versus mobs. If it was the case, they, would, they wouldn't want PvP, they want PvE. But they want PvP to kill other players, and that's what they're after. So, that's why every zombie game pretty much just goes down the, the toilet when, when it's got PvP in it. But in their system here, they're going to have it where you're going to have mental status. So, like, if you start killing people, you might start hearing voices, getting shaky hands, can't hold your guns correctly. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff. There's going to be weather effects where you're going to have to keep warm. Uh, you know, it's it's just so amazing that, it, you know, AAA companies cannot do this stuff. And they have the technology, they have the resources, they have the programmers, but it's the small indie developers, the game, the gamers themselves are having to learn how to game, and I mean, you know, not game, <laughs> they're having to learn how to program and make their own games because, well, the industry is just too stuck up into themselves that they think they know what the public really wants, and they actually do not. And if you start looking at all the indie development going on since uh, CryEngine's more available now without costing people an arm and a leg and Unity's more available now without costing, you know, you're just small guy, uh, arm and a leg, and people learn to code and graphics and everything, it, it's just becoming easier for, and if you notice in this era right now, we've had a blow up of indie developers and we've got some good games coming out. And it's just, in my opinion, it's making the AAA companies just look like crap. You know, because you see what these guys right here are doing. Um, you're going to have CB radios and stuff in here. You're going to have bear traps. You're going to be able to hunt. You're going to be able to fish. You're going to be able to small, put out bear traps, small rabbit traps, whatever. You're going to be able to you fortify any vehicle in most games. H1Z1 is going to have a bunch of vehicles, but half of them ain't going to be usable. They're just props. Well, in here, you're not going to find that. Uh, in H1Z1, you're probably going to have buildings that are finally enterable, but there might be some that's not enterable. But here, all of them will be enterable. Uh, you go to State of Decay, there's a bunch of buildings in the backdrop uh, scenery, but you can never get there. You can never enter them. And that's just sad, you know, because when you see something, you want to play with it. And when they don't let you play with it, it just makes you mad. And, I mean, you just look at this. This is just the beginning of this game. And, you know, y'all need to support these guys. Uh, they're small team. It's five guys. And they're doing an amazing job. Go to their Kickstarter page. I'll leave links in the description to the Kickstarter page, uh, go support them. I mean, you know, most people ask for millions of dollars to help uh, or hundreds of thousands of million dollars to back their project. These guys are only asking for $12,000, which I was shocked to only see them ask for $12,000. But, you know, that just also tells you how bad the industry goes around and rips people off when they want such a high price to help kickstart a game. And, but, you know, they only want 12 grand. Everybody, uh, you know, pass the word on to your friends. This is going to be multiplayer. You're going to be able to host your own servers uh, from what, I, what I've gathered. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's going to be one of the best zombie games that I've seen. I mean, it's already got better content than H1Z1. And it's five guys compared to 17 people on the uh, H1Z1 project. 
And then you have uh, Seven Days to Die, which is a good game, which is doing better than H1Z1. And, you know, they're getting ready to do their stuff. And, you know, the guys at the Fun Pimps, they're good. But these guys right here need their credit in the spotlight right now to get funded. So if y'all would go fund them, uh, I'm pretty sure they would appreciate it. And you all would uh, enjoy a very good game. But that's it.